Now, I want you to turn with me, please, in your Bibles, if you have a Bible with you tonight, I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus. And we're in Exodus chapter 10. The book of Exodus, please. And we're in chapter 10. And come with me down to verse number 21, Exodus 10, verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stead. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle and our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not an hoof be left behind. For thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come hither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself. See my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. One of the greatest comforts we, the Christians, have tonight is that if we lose a loved one to death, and mind you, the Bible's true, friends, isn't it? It's appointed unto men once to die. Death stares us in the face every day. Every funeral, every wake, every grave reminds us of that great truth, even as it's found in 2 Samuel 14 and verse 14, where we read, For we all must needs die. But one of the greatest comforts for the child of God when a loved one dies in Christ, in spite of the pain, in spite of the sorrow, in spite of the grief that death brings, we know that we are going to see that loved one again. For the Christian, death is not goodbye. It's good night until we meet in the morning. But it takes that person to be in Christ tonight to be in heaven. It takes that person to be to the cross. It takes that person tonight to be saved. Because the Lord Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. One of the lovely thoughts that the Bible teaches tonight is this, that there is a place called heaven, that there is a land that is fairer than day, 
My goodness, wouldn't it be awful if the grave was the end? Thank God tonight, the grave's not the end. I want you to know tonight there's a place called heaven. How do I know there's a place called heaven? I'll tell you this, the Lord Jesus tells me there's such a place. John's Gospel 14, verse 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, and when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. The Lord Jesus tells me there's a place called heaven. And the Apostle Paul teaches us tonight that there's a place called heaven. Do you remember what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9? I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And I know, friends, if you have a loved one in heaven tonight, maybe it's a father, maybe it's a mother, Maybe it's a sister or a brother. Maybe it's a husband or a wife. Maybe it's a little child. Thank God for them tonight. They're safe in the arms of Jesus. Safe on His gentle breast. There by His love, they're overshaded. Sweetly their souls do rest. That's comforting, friends, isn't it? For any person who dies in Christ, all is well with their soul. We know that we're going to see them again. But my friend, there's nothing more harrowing. There's nothing more harrowing for a person not to die in Christ for a person not to die saved. Because a person who dies not saved tonight and a person who dies outside of Christ doesn't go to heaven. That person goes to hell tonight because the Lord Jesus says, No man cometh to the Father but by me. It's a harrowing thought tonight to know or to think of someone who dies. The thought of never seeing them again is a harrowing thought. I'd done a gospel mission in New Mills in County Tyrone a number of years ago. One of the local Presbyterian ministers who was involved in that mission shared with me a very moving story. During his years of ministry, one of the mem members of his congregation had, a, had the harrowing experience of watching not but one, but, but two coffins being carried from his home. He says, the day of the funeral. On the day of the funeral, he says, after the service and the home was completed, he went into the little bedroom where two coffins were, the coffin of his wife and the coffin of his son. He went over to the son's coffin and he kissed the wee boy's cold cheek and says, Son, I know, without a shadow of a doubt, I know I'm going to see you again. He looked down at him for the last time, I'll see you again, son, someday. He turned round to the wife's coffin. Looking upon her cold face, he broke down with a broken heart. He kissed her cold cheek. And he says, oh dear, oh dear. how you've left me with no hope of ever seeing you again. And 
That minister said, I had some job trying to get him away from the coffin. The thought of never seeing him again was unbearable. He heard again. You see, she died without Christ, leaving him with no hope. And mind you, she attended many a mission. And this brings me to my text tonight. My text is Exodus chapter 10. And it's that last phrase. I will see thy face again no more. I never preached on this text ever before and never even thought of preaching it. But I have been compelled to preach it tonight. I will see thy face again. No more. These were the words of Moses to Pharaoh. I will see thy face again. No more. Let me tell you something about Pharaoh tonight, friends. He was a man who had a precious privilege. You say to me, George, what precious privilege had Pharaoh? He was one man tonight who saw the hand and heard the voice of God. Up until this very point tonight, God done terrible things to awaken this man in obeying him. Dear unsaved friend, God has to do terrible things at times because sometimes and some people were so hard of hearing God's voice. Sometimes God does terrible things to get us to listen. An unsaved person, think you be careful, because God might have to do something terrible. And it's not because He hates you. It's not because, friend, He's against you. There's not one more for you than God, and there's nobody loves you more than Him tonight. But sometimes God has to be cruel to be kind. And her, Pharaoh was a man tonight who saw God do nine great miracles. And if there ever was a man tonight who should have repented and turned to God, God had to be Pharaoh, friend. a man with a precious privilege. Pharaoh was a man tonight without excuse. Pharaoh was a man tonight that could never say God never give him a chance. God give him amples of chances tonight. You know, friend, what God was saying to Pharaoh I could almost use Isaiah 48 and 9 where it would read, For my name's sake will I defire mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain from me that I cut thee not off. Listen, nine times God tried to speak to him. How many times already has God spoke to you, friend? God has afforded you these precious privileges. Maybe God has spoken to some of you in days gone by through sickness. And there was a time you listened. And there was a time you thought about it. Ah, but you turned your back on them. Maybe God spoke to you through a gospel meeting just like this. Maybe a gospel mission. There was a time you listened. There was a time you were troubled. You know, friend, God can trouble you tonight. 
And God tonight may trouble you this evening, I pray he does, because I'll tell you, I don't like it when sinners are comfortable. But here's Pharaoh tonight, a man with a precious privilege. Even though nine times God spoke to him, Moses at the conclusion had to say, Thy face will I see again no more. Pharaoh was a man tonight with a precious privilege. But Pharaoh was a man with a belittling behavior. Yes, a belittling behavior says, what do you mean, George, he was a man with a belittling behavior? Do you know what he said in Exodus chapter 5 and verse 2? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Who is the Lord tonight that I should obey him? I'll tell you, friend, tonight, it's very, very dangerous for you to belittle God. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Away back in the years of the 1914-18 war, a young commander called Peter Campbell, he was only 24, was in command of eight young men who were about to embark on a mission. The padre of the troops came and drew alongside Campbell and said, let me pray for you and your men before you go out. And Campbell says, we don't need your prayer. And we don't need your God either. And the padre was shocked. And the Padre said to him, Campbell, now listen. You mightn't live after tonight. Are you not afraid of death? With a face and with a heart as hard as iron said, death doesn't scare me. That's why I have been so successful. Too many men has froze under the thought of death and died. Death doesn't scare me. The Padre prayed within himself, and he prayed again, Lord, what else will I say? And he asked him this text. He said, asked him this question. Listen, you're not afraid of death, Campbell. Are you afraid of God? And Campbell came back, and you know what Campbell said. Peter Campbell said, a 24-year-old man said, a young fella, I don't fear God. In fact, God should fear me. The Padre says, young Campbell, be not deceived. God is not mocked. And as soon as the Padre left, the signal went. Campbell went o and his men went over the trench. And he never made three feet. He was blown to pieces. It's dangerous tonight. It's dangerous to be little God. Let me tell you something tonight. He's the one tonight with whom we all have to do. He's the one tonight who's going to pass the final judgment. And friend, tonight, to belittle him is to belittle the one who died for you on Calvary's cross. Do you not realize tonight that the Lord Jesus loves you? That he went all the way to Calvary's cross to be crucified? 
by the very hands of wicked men that he came to save. And on that cross he suffered the just for us, the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Do you not realize tonight, dear unsaved friend, that his precious blood was shed for you because that's the only price that could be paid, that you and I could be saved? The Lord Jesus said, What shall a man give in exchange for a soul? Man can give nothing because nothing, man has nothing to give. And don't say, friend, you've nothing to give. Not one thing can you give for your soul to be saved. But God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now listen, sinner friend. The man who belittled God in Exodus chapter 10 was the man who was told, Thy face will I see again no more. Do you know tonight Pharaoh prayed or Moses prayed for Pharaoh? Prayed that the Lord would stay the hand of judgment. And God heard Moses' prayer. And Pharaoh witnessed that God was the God who heard Moses' prayer. But, Moses, but Pharaoh tonight, Pharaoh, he was a man with a precious privilege all right. He was a man tonight with a belittling behavior. But Pharaoh tonight was a man with a hardened heart. That was his problem. A hardened heart. Nine times God spoke to him. God spoke to him mightily. God spoke to him powerfully. Nine times Pharaoh hardened his heart. Four times you'll read in the Word of God, friends, not the once, not twice, not three times, four times you'll read in the Scriptures. Today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. You remember what the book of Job says, Who hath hardened himself against the Almighty? and has prospered. Nobody has ever hardened himself against the Almighty. Prospered. Friend, tonight, do you remember Paul and Felix? As Paul preached to Felix that day, Felix trembled. And I believe he trembled under the mighty power of God, the Holy Spirit. Ah, but friend, Felix hardened his heart, didn't he? Men and women can tremble, but just because you tremble doesn't mean you'll trust there. Trembling's no good. You need to trust. Do you remember the day Paul shared his testimony with Agrippa? What did Agrippa say? Paul, almost Almost thou persuadest me a Christian. I'm almost persuaded. And I'm telling you something now, friends. Paul says, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and all together, such as I am. Here's a wee word of warning for you now. The more the Lord speaks to you, the harder your heart comes. 
Every time God speaks, you put it off. The harder your heart becomes to the voice of God. That's why so many people are saved when they're young. Hearts are tender. Hearts are soft. But the older you get, the harder it is to get saved. And the harder it is for God to get through. And friend, God is merciful. God is very merciful. And has been when God saves you in the evening tide of life. Pharaoh was a man tonight with a precious privilege. He was a man with a belittling behavior. He was a man with a hardened heart where Moses had to say, Thy face will I see again no more. I'm coming to the last point. He was a man with an eternal end, just like you just like me. Pharaoh's time to die had to come and did come. And Moses' words rang through, Thy face will I see again no more. Listen tonight. God's speaking to you. Don't you put God off tonight. There may be someone in this meeting, and this text could be to you, as far as I am concerned with you, thy face I will see again no more. But what would happen tonight if you were to die unsaved? That text would ring true for you. Thy face will I see again. No more. I'll tell you, there's worse, there's worse than dying. Believe you me, there's worse than dying. You say to me, George, what is worse than dying? I'll tell you what's worse than dying. Rejecting Christ is worse than dying. Because you remember this, you have an eternal end. Once this life is over, eternity begins. And friend, tonight, if you have a loved one and they're saved and you're not saved, it'll be an awful experience for them to look upon your face and say, your face will I see no more. I think of Abigail saying that to Nabal, you know, the day Nabal died. A wife saying it to her husband, thy face. Will I see again? No more. I think of a husband saying that to a wife, Lot, 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 saying to his wife, Thy face. Will I see again? No more. I think of a friend saying that. You remember at Calvary, the two thieves, and they were about to die. The soldiers were coming to break their legs to kill them outright. And one boy shouts over to the other fellow, Thy face will I see again no more. And I think tonight of a father and a son. And David himself had to say, Thy face will I see again no more when Absalom died. Now, this is what David had to cry. Oh, my son, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. Thy face will I see again no more. It'll be a sad story 
if this was to be for you tonight, for you to reject Christ who died for you. And the reality is tonight, thy face will I see again no more. Come tonight while the Savior in mercy is calling. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And let's do that just now as we bow ourselves in prayer. Every head bowed, please, every eye closed. If God has been speaking to your heart tonight, friend, listen. Come and speak to us now, won't ye? We're not here to force you into anything, but we're here tonight to help you to come to the Savior and to help you tonight to come to Him and to trust Him to be saved. And if I can be of any help tonight, friends, say to me at the door, George, I want a wee word now. Please do that, won't you? This is too serious. Too far too serious to let it go. Lord, we turn the eternal issues of this meeting over to Thee. Give deciding grace, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.